As always, I'm kind of interested in taking a look at what new features and updates and tweaks and enhancements have been made to Elementor and Elementor Pro. Even though I don't really use it that much myself, I do still think it's good to be kept up to date with all of the new features. And today, we're going to be taking a look at what's been added, updated, and changed in version 3.14 of Elementor Pro. This is beta, so if you want to test this out yourself, link in the description below. Make sure you only do this on a test website. Don't do it on a live site at all. You're just asking for problems if you do. Okay, so there's a lot of new features and tweaks that have been added in. I'm going to go through them relatively quickly to show you exactly how you can get started testing them out yourself. So as always, the first thing you're going to need to do is go into your dashboard of WordPress, install the developer's edition of Elementor. And once you've done that, come into the option for Elementor and into settings. And inside there, go to the features option. And inside the features option, this is where you can see the ongoing experiments. So for this example, we've got the Flexbox container active, the grid container, the editor top bar, the nested elements, and the global style guide, which is a new feature. So once you've done that, you set those as active and you saved everything, you are then good to go to access these new features. So let's kick things off with the probably one of the bigger features is the nested carousel. So how does it work? Well, first of all, we're going to go ahead and create our first carousel. So let's go and search for carousel. You can see we have the carousel option. So we've got the loop carousel. Let's click to add that in. You can see that adds it into our template. If we look on the right hand side, the container and loop carousel. Now you also notice one other thing. There's a new enhancement to the interface in Elementor in this beta version where we can just click a single click on any of the widgets and we'll insert it into our design. So much quicker and easier than the drag and drop. So that's nice to see. And there are some more enhancements and I'll cover those as we go through the video. So you'll see now, once we create this, we've got, like we've seen in the loop builder, we can now go ahead and either choose a template that we previously created, or we can create one on the fly. So let's just do that. First of all, if you wanted to grab a template you've already created, you can see you can access it by just simply typing in the beginning of the name, and that will go ahead and search for it. However, if you want to create a template, you can just click the create a template option inside the loop carousel itself or on the left hand side. You'll click that. It'll ask you, do you want to save the changes to the page you're currently working on? We will say yes to that. And that will now take us in and you'll see all the options we have on the left hand side now are all to do with creating the template for the interior sort of design aspect of that nested carousel. So if we wanted to create something to do with our posts, we could easily use these options. So let's do that. Let's say we'll grab the featured image. I'll click to add that in. Again, you see, single click adds it into the actual container itself. Now we can come back to the plus. We can go ahead and say we'll drop in the post title that will go underneath. And we'll come back and again one more time and we'll say we want to put in the post excerpt. And finally, we'll come back and we'll grab a button and we'll drop that underneath. And we've now created our basic card design. So we can go ahead, we can customize this. We'll use H3 to give us a bit more, a sort of a semantic kind of layout. All the other things are looking okay. We'll grab this click here. We'll change that to read article. We'll click the dynamic tags option and we'll say we'll link this to the post URL. So all these things are what you're used to when you create templates and so on. But we're just doing this inside the nested carousel. Once we're happy with the look of that, now everything functions, we can now go ahead, click on save and back. That will save that little template, take us back in and we'll now see our nested carousel starts to take on the design aspects that we've just created. And now what we can do is we can select our carousel from the options on the right hand side, or we can click directly inside there, whichever you prefer. And then we can go ahead and we can customize things. If you want to change your template or edit the template, you can do that in here, or you can just simply click edit template on the widget itself. You can set the number of slides, the slides to display. So you can change this to two, for example, if you want to have bigger images and so on, or four, if you want to have smaller and more on the page, up to you how you want to do it. We'll set this back to three. You can choose how many slides you scroll at a time. So we can have that scroll a lot quicker. If you've got a lot of content, that could be really useful. You also got the equal height option, which means that these will always be equal height. Now, obviously, I don't have text in these other areas, so don't worry about that. This is just some filler text just to demonstrate how this all works. And then underneath, you've got your normal options, so you can apply a query. So if you wanted to use posts, pages, custom post types, WooCommerce products, all those options will be available if you have those additional plugins installed. If not, you have these basic options, but you can easily come into manual selection. You can create a current query. So if you wanted to use this as a kind of, you may like these other products or you may like these other articles, related articles and so on, and you wanted to use a carousel because you had a lot, you can use the current query. There's lots of options inside here. Pagination, if you want to, you can change this between things like fractions, 
you can have your dots, you can have a progress bar, or you can get rid of them completely. Entirely up to you how you want to do it. So that's the first set of options, and that is very, very simple and straightforward. And it's good to see that that has now been brought out. It would be nice to see the tabs, the accordion, and the uh, sort of nested carousel all being brought out at the same time as opposed to being dripped out like this. But again, we are getting closer to those tools that a lot of people need, and we're getting more flexibility in the design tools we have available. And that is a good thing. You know, so again, I will give kudos to Elemental. In the last six months, they really have taken a big U-turn in the right direction to start listening to what people have been asking for and actually creating content for them, creating the tools that allow them to do it. So I will give credit there one more time. I've done it in the past and I'll do it again as they keep moving forward in the right direction. There are still some strange quirks going on in final release versions, so it'd be good to see them addressing those as well. So fingers crossed, we'll have the best of both worlds soon. Okay, so that's the nested carousel. We've seen how to use that. Let's move on to the next new feature or update. Now, with the loop builder, we've seen this in the past. We've covered it in several different videos, and we've taken a look at how you can inject designs into this to have alternative designs. There's an update now that allows us to inject custom templates that use static information. So you may want to put something really simple, like an advert or something, into your loop, and then use that to promote various different sort of things you may be selling, services, and so on. It's very easy to do. All we need to do is make sure we've created a loop template. And I've already done that. You can see this is nothing new. We've covered this in the past. We can say now apply an alternative template. We'll enable that option. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and either, again, like we just seen in the carousel, create a template, or we can pull one in that we've already created. Now, I've already created a really simple, just a basic image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go in and I'm going to start typing in the name of that. So this is called the cat loop, not the Jamie Marsden here. And you'll see now that inserts my static design into the overall design itself. And you can now come in and customize this. So you can see we can choose the grid position. So we can set this to be the first. We can set this to be the second, third, fourth, and fifth, and so on. We can choose the number of columns we want this to span. So this example one makes a little bit more sense. But what you see is it doesn't pull in any of the extra information. So we have this entire space here to play with but it's not gonna put in text and things like that because it's using an alternative template that we've designed that's just basic static template. If you wanna edit that template, we can simply come in, choose edit template. That will load that template in, in a new tab so it doesn't disrupt the main one. And we can now go in and we can add other things in. So let's go ahead and say we wanna put a title in. So we'll just pop that underneath there and we'll just call this the cat loop. And we'll just click on publish. So we've now made some changes to that. So we can close that tab down. Now, obviously, we're going to need to refresh this. So it's a bit, a bit frustrating that you have a new tab, but then you still have to come back in and refresh this page. So hopefully they'll find a way of when you close that tab down or something or template is saved, there will be an automatic refresh and a save, you know, however they want to approach it. But it would be nice to have that. But we'll refresh it. We'll say reload that. And you see, there's our cat loop with our new text underneath it. Now, this is a really terrible looking example, but the tech that was being used behind it is more important than me spending hours creating a design just to demonstrate this. But that is one of the new features inside here. You can also choose whether you want to apply this once or you want to apply it more than once. You have options in here and you can add additional ones in so you can create as many of these you want, position them inside your loop as you see fit. I like this. I think this is very, very useful if you have a real estate listed or a vehicle listed and you want to sell insurance or other services. This is a great way of creating a nice eye-catching sort of advert, whatever you want, drop that inside there. And it could be video, it could be pretty much anything you want to put inside you. So there's a lot of options in how you could implement this into your design process. Take a look at that. It's pretty cool to see this has now been added in to give us more control. Now, one of the other key new features that have been added in to this beta release is the ability to now have a really simple style guide template. Now, I've kind of recommended doing this in the past for a lot of different purposes. And while this doesn't 100% replace what I've suggested because there's more features inside there, this is a good starting point for your colors and your typography. Now, to access this, you do again, like I say, make sure this is enabled inside those experimental features. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come into the settings for our site and we're going to come into the global colors or global fonts. Only these two options are kind of covered with this right now. If we open this up, you'll see now what we get is we get this style guide preview. Uh, what this does is it shows us the system color. So you can see these are the main system colors that are by default on every single element or site you create and you can customize all these, rename them, do all those kinds of good things. They're all listed inside here. And then underneath we've got our custom colors. 
So if you want to add another color in, you can easily do that by clicking Add Color. You see this automatically updates. We'll just call this Demo Color, and we'll change that to a different color. We'll choose something like this bluish color, and we'll grab that nice royal blue. And you see that's now added that in. And if you want to, you can click on any of these and it'll bring up your color picker and all those kinds of simple options. So it's very quick and easy to adjust those should you need to without having to go back to all these options on the left hand side. And the same thing kind of goes for the typography. You can see this now shows us our system fonts. If we click on them, you can see this now takes us into the global fonts option. So again, it's nice to see that this we can interact with this in a very logical and understandable way. We don't have to rely on the left hand column to select things. We can do it directly inside the main preview window. So we can come over to the left hand side. Now we can change to a different font weight. Always make sure that you have the font weights installed. If you don't, then nothing will happen. For example, if we choose this light, you'll see nothing happens because I don't have that font weight installed. However, if we go to something like medium, you can see that updates accordingly. So if you don't see anything change, chances are you don't have that font installed in that particular weight. It's not an error going on in how everything works. And there you go, that's how easy it is to start using these style guides. Now for me, I like this. I think this is really useful. I'd like to see it expand out to those other things. So when you customize forms and so on. So when you come back out of here, we'll say save changes, you come back out of this and you wanna make changes to your typography, your buttons and so on. You can control various different aspects inside you and you can have that preview displaying inside your style guide. Expand it out to these extra features. That would be pretty cool to see. But it's a good starting point and it's nice to see these things that make our lives a little easier being added in to the design tools that we have. Now the eagle eye among you may have noticed a few new things that have been added or updated or tweaked about the editor itself. We've already seen that you can now one click insert any of the widgets, but if we come up to, for example, the elemental icon in the top left, we click, they've now set this to be exit to WordPress, which now makes more sense and that will take you back into WordPress itself. So we click that, that'll take us back into WordPress, back into that page, and then we can carry on doing what we want to do. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the top, you'll see it currently tells us we're editing the loop in this example. And we can now click on there and we can see all the different items we can edit from you. But you'll also notice we now get add new page. And what this does is it adds a new, I know that's a shocker, I know, but it actually is a little bit more useful than just that. We click on add a new page. What that'll do is that doesn't open another tab. It just literally reloads the content with a blank page and all the editor stays in place so it's smoother to work with it's a little bit less intrusive and now we can start building out using these single click options we can click to add our first widget in we can say we want to put a heading inside there puts the heading inside you'd kind of get where i'm coming from with this so there's a lot of new options that are kind of customized this now apparently there is a way of editing the templates that if you can't get to these handles, you're apparently you can hover just over one of the templates and it's supposed to give a kind of like overlay effect. I can't get this to work even though I've enabled it. So maybe this is just a quirk with my layout, my setup, I don't know. But if you have a look, you'll see this vis visual indication of page parts, which apparently is supposed to make it a little easier to access those different template parts, your headers, your footers, and so on. Like I say, at the moment, I can't get this to actually work. Now, if we take a quick look at the GitHub options, you can see there's some new keyboard shortcuts. There's some updates for working with WordPress functions and WooCommerce functions. Again, I would recommend taking a look at this. And there's also more options, styling options for your tabs, your icon widgets, and so on. So it's good to see that. There's also more features for performance and accessibility. So all these things are obviously very, very welcome. So now that we've taken a look at these new features, these updates, these tweaks, and so on, What's my thoughts on this? Well, first of all, I'm gonna say kudos to Elemental, like I said earlier in the video, for listening to what people want. In the last six to 12 months, where they brought the roadmap out, which has been publicly available, where they've taken on board feedback, where they've streamlined the company, and ultimately, what appears to have been gone back to the way they were early days, where they listened, they took on board, and they were actually bringing things out that we wanted, all credit to you. Unfortunately, they are playing catch up to other tools that are out there that have gone past them with lots of these different options quite some time ago, so they're a lot more mature. However, we know that there's a massive user base using Elemental Free and Pro, so it's good for people that are using it to get these features being implemented. Now, you ask a question, would I start moving my design tools away from what I currently use and move back to Elemental? No, no, I wouldn't. Not because I think Elemental is a bad product and I think that it's, it's kind of going backwards, I've just moved on from what Elemental offers. If there was a project that required what it had and I could only use Elemental, then I would probably feel confident to use it. However, I do think that a lot of the things that I personally use have been superseded 
by core tools in things like bricks, generate press, generate blocks, and so on. They do the things that I need them to do. But that's not to say that you should move away from Elemental. If you're happy with it and it does what you want, stick with it. There's no reason to move. Anyway, all applicable links for everything I've covered in this video are in the description below. And as always, I welcome your feedback on these new features, Elemental as a whole. Drop those in the comment section down below because I'd love to get your feedback. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care. Thank you.